Yeah, we're out again. <laughs> we'll get him next time on this one, I think. <laughs> anyway, trust us, it runs pretty good. It does. It'll, it'll happen. Ooh. He does magic tricks like that. Poof. Welcome back to Stay Tuned, I'm Tony Angelo, this is my YouTube channel, and I had to sell one of my most iconic builds ever to keep this party rolling. Before we get into that, let's do a little bit of background. I grew up as like a car obsessed maniac kid, bought my first hot rod at 15, was super, super into hot rods, and worked at a Porsche shop as a teenager, somehow wound up into turbo rotaries, which thrust me into drifting. I became one of the first American pro drift racers, and then a stunt driver, I spent about 10 years being a Drift racer and stunt driver till 2015 or so. Spent six years hosting a show called Hot Rod Garage on Motor Trend. Then I decided to be able to spend the kind of time I want to spend with my family. I have three young daughters. I wanted to move to YouTube and stay in Pennsylvania pretty much full time. When I decided to make the decision to go to YouTube, I was approached by a pretty big automotive YouTube channel. Uh, and they said, listen, instead of doing your own thing, why don't you come over to our channel? You'll make a bunch of content, you know, put a team together and shoot in your shop. Send over episodes or videos, whatever you call them on YouTube, and, and we'll put them out on our channel as like a show. And we decided that sounded pretty good. I got some of my buddies, hired them on full time. We really got set up and dialed. And after six months or so, it was clear it wasn't a great fit. And we decided to part ways and move on. Yeah. After some soul searching and figuring out and a little bit of advice and talking to some of the bigger YouTubers, Tavares, Derek from Vice Grip, dudes that have been really killer sort of mentors in that regard. Uh, I decided I'm gonna make a go of it and I'm just gonna focus on my channel, stay tuned and keep on rocking. A little bit of advice, if you're gonna start a YouTube channel, you wanna put out videos consistently, find, them, uh, find kind of a lane where people respond to you positively and sort of do that over and over. Make sure they come out at the same time, make sure there's no crazy gaps in the thing. Like really just consistently pump out you know, the best quality content you can. So to start my YouTube channel basically full time with, you know, three employees slash buddies, the whole team, it's probably not the way to do it. All of the people I've seen be really successful, they start themselves, they do it after hours, they edit and shoot everything themselves and they build this momentum and grow and grow and grow. But I had put together a really great group of dudes um, and I didn't want to get rid of them and they wanted to stay on and we kind of wanted to just keep this dream rocking. You know, they took a little bit of a pay cut and I decided to put everything I have towards this whole dream and that's where we are and it's been going awesome. By the time you see this video, we will have hit 200,000 subs uh, on Stay Tuned and the response has been fantastic and we really absolutely appreciate everybody watching the channel. It's been so fun. We've been doing this more or less full time since April, we started with about 135,000 subs I'd built over a couple of years part time. And, uh, and now we're over 200, things are happening, there's tons of killer projects. But for me, I have been investing all of my time, all of my energy, and pretty much all of my money into keeping this whole thing rocking. And to keep going and to keep moving, it's time to sell one of my most iconic favorite meaningful special builds ever. You can see there's project cars everywhere, all over the place. Um, as far as selling them, there's probably three cars that really have good value to them, are put together, running, driving, you know, somewhat finished up cars. And the first one is my... Please take a second to go over to the Stay Tuned merch store. We have all of the shirts back in stock, the classics, Stay Tuned Lightning Bolt, Angelo's Gym, and we're gonna lose the shop, plus the new down and dirty shirt is here. And it is ripping off the shell, so grab one if you want it. All right, let's get back to the video. And the first one is my 1971 Dodge Demon 340. Easy, easy. So this Demon is my very first car I ever bought. I was 15 and a half. I'd saved all of my money from two summers working at the tire shop, and I saved 1,800 bucks. And uh, my parents paid for the other half of this thing. I, well, ish. I, I got it for like 3350. Uh, back in the late 90s, and it is the raddest car. It's an original 344 speed car. That's a matching numbers motor, so I've never gone super crazy with it, but it's been fully decked out, gone through. The engine was rebuilt on HRG a couple years ago. Probably has 2,000 miles on it. It's super clean. You know, when I was a kid, I didn't know what I wanted. I just wanted a muscle car. Uh, so I just started saving money, looking at all sorts of different things. I had this fully rebuilt. It's 40 over by uh, Santa Fe Engine Supply in California. Um, it's 
pretty close to stock. It's like, you know, it's got a purple cam in it and upgraded valve springs. Uh, compression is right around stock 10 to 1. And it's a nice little ripper. I haven't fired it up in a while and I do want to get it going. It's got sweet Doug's headers. It's got an Edelbrock air gap intake and it actually has the original 700 uh, double pumper holly that I got on this car in the 90s. Mopars rule. They're super weird. They're super fun. And this car screams. It's a four-speed car, 391 rear gear. Um, it was really wicked fun to have this thing in high school. Mostly I was working on it all the time. It was, you know, broken most of the time. But very special car to me. Um, like I said, it's got QA1 suspension all over it. It's actually not leaf spring in the back. It has this hidden six link setup. Um, just a nice, clean, fun car. And beyond what it is or what it's even worth, like to me, I've held onto this car through thick and thin uh, when we were like drift racing and, and selling everything to keep on racing, stuff like that years and years ago. Managed to hold onto this, so doesn't really feel like something I want to sell. What I also loved about Dodge is in 1970, uh, all of the other auto manufacturers, GM and Ford, decided, okay, the gas crunch is coming. They pulled a bunch of compression out of their motors. They kind of tamed everything down. And Dodge just sort of ignored the EPA and the government for another year. So in 71, you still got a Mopar that was as hot as ever. 72 things turned down, but you got that one extra year. And this is that year. So it's not only the first year of the Demon, um, which is a very short-lived car because people in the South didn't buy a car called the Demon, but it's a 71. So out of 71 or 72 Demon, the only two years they made them, this is the year to have. The front end is cooler, they made more power, they're more sought after. It's just a wicked cool car. Yes, it's just really a Dodge version of the Plymouth Duster because the Duster very quickly became Plymouth's best-selling car and Dodge said, I want some of that. But uh, it's just a very cool, the size is awesome, it, the shape is awesome. You know, these were considered compact cars back then, which I love because now it's a decent size to drive around. And again, 71, coolest year. After 72, they started calling them Dart Sports because, again, the word demon at the time back in the day just scared too many people off in the Bible Belt from buying the car, which is a bummer because it's a wicked awesome car. Now they have cars called a demon and nobody bats an eye, but, you know, it's 50 years later or whatever. We're at shop number two. Um, shop number one is where you see us doing all the work. It's really a very small shop. We have just enough room for one car to be worked on and maybe one car to get stored there and then i uh also have this spot this is shop number two it's just a long kind of little warehouse that we cram full of project cars and it's not an ideal scenario because they're crammed in here so hard that like to get my demon out to take it for a fun drive would be as you can see hours of moving stuff around so they sit for way too long uh, i'm hoping to get to a point as the channel grows and everything we can get more space we can have more access to the cars and you know it's kind of a thing where like oh a car's done i can keep it you know with me or at the other shop and just be able to jump in and and work on it or drive it around or whatever i'm gonna fill the bowls up here get this thing fired up it's been a while it's got a mechanical pump so i don't like to just crank it over and over and over and over it's a nice little trick if your car's been sitting for a long time, you don't want to just beat the engine up, cranking it on the starter. And this battery is fully dead, so again, the less we got to crank it, the better it's going to be for these bearings that have been sitting a little bit. We'll splash down the throat, and it will hopefully fire right up. Hit it, Zach. Make sure it's not in a gear, and let her go. Instantly. That's how that works. There we go. A little bit of this extra spritz there. This thing hasn't been running in what, five months? Probably, it's been a while. And I love this motor, it's original. I don't want to crank it over and over and over. So, a little spurt of gas. These are the bowl vents. So if you just get a little squirt bottle or pinch a little plastic bottle, you can fill them up directly instead of waiting for that pump, pull it out of the tank and fill it all up. Small block Mopars, man. They're my favorite. But all, everything in here is my favorite. Yeah, boy. All right, so being that this is my first car, I'm pretty attached to it, uh, I definitely am not gonna sell this one. Let's move on, Let's see what else we got. That's worth a damn. All right, one of the other really special cars to me is this extra parts car, 64 Polara. You're just kidding, it's a rusty disaster. Don't look at that one. It's this, my 1974 Pontiac Firebird, full on 80s street freak. Ripper. 
One of my favorite cars ever for sure. This is a car that I bought, a guy built it in the 80s. It was painted in 83, just like this. this amateur painter, paint enthusiast, rock and roll dude, Gene, awesome guy, talk to him now. Uh, painted this when it was his girlfriend's car and then bought it off of her. Used to take it to the shows down in Maryland, World of Wheels, stuff like that. It's, it was originally a 350 four-speed car. He put a blower on it. Um, he put a 671 on it. So I bought it as a roller. I just saw the paint job one night and I was like, I gotta have it. I bought it for a thousand bucks in 2019 off a of marketplace and it's killer. You can see we have outfitted it with all the best Pontiac stuff. It has a 462 stroker. I got a last year, last good year, 74. 400, um, got a butler stroker kit, hand ported a set of 6X heads, and then dropped a uh, Speedmaster 671 on top of it with dual Holley 750s, and it rips. This thing makes 570 wheel horsepower, probably 700 horsepower at the motor. It's gone as quick as 1080, I believe. Yep. And it's just a fun, you know, it's four speed still. It has a G Force T101 in it, so it's got a proper crash box in there. Still got the velour seats, the velour headliner. You know, this thing is is wild. Still got the A-track in there. Hank Williams. Shag carpet. We have spent also, like, this is a car that we spend a ton of time on it. It looks original, and the paint is original. It's been, you know, hand buffed. But every moving part has been, except for, like, the steering shaft has been replaced. You know, it's got uh, all fresh brakes. It's got QA1 full drag suspension, tubular arms in the front. It had, you know, we did a subframe connector. It has a quick performance nine inch in the back with a Speedmaster center section. I even had the bumpers repainted. You know, this car is one of my favorites and it's just like, yes, it looks wild. It's more or less irreplaceable as far as like getting someone to do this kind of a paint job today can be done. It would cost you a fortune, but it's not gonna be the old school enamels. You know, there are very talented old school painters still rocking, but just to be able to find something like this with this color package in the Pontiac is, I don't know how you could do it again. You wanna fire this one up? Absolutely. This one is, you know, still registered, insured. I did sick week with it right off of the trailer, never driving this thing. It had never been on a track or really anywhere after 30 years. We went to average 11s for the week and then later took it back here and tuned it up a little bit more and got it to run in the 10s. So it's a 10 second full interior, all iron motor Firebird. It's awesome. It's so fun to drive. It sounds killer. Fire it up. Sounds good, I promise. It'll, wha it'll happen. He does magic tricks like that. Poof. Don't make me get my first bottle out. Love this thing it's been awesome it was like a one in a million find and we worked super hard on it there's a joke at our you know in the shop that like except for the firebird because we say like everything's kind of slapped together except for the firebird you know like everything is kind of like uh you know not worth much money except for the firebird you know that's kind of the vibe of this car is we just tried really hard it's such a special car it has so many cool accents and so much personality that we've just done a pretty decent job on this thing yeah, it, it makes power like crazy. You know, I'd never had a serious Pontiac engine. You can put this thing in second gear, you know, with a 370 rear gear. You can put it in second gear at like 2000 RPM and stand on it on the highway and it will just melt these tires. Endless, allegedly, allegedly. That's what I heard. These tires just mostly get vaporized on this thing. It has a permanent coating of rubber here in this That's area. That's to protect the paint. This protects the paint. You lay down this protective coating of, of rubber and then your paint doesn't wear it's a secret here's a car i always wanted a cuda they're like the raddest looking muscle cars ever 70 to 74 e-bodies i'm talking about the other ones are cool too um, this is a car i built as like a drift muscle car in 2016 
It's got a 6.4 Hemi uh, from like a 2015 uh, Scat Pack Challenger, makes 500 ish horsepower, T56 Magnum, uh, you know, it's got a, a Curry 9 inch in it with custom three link that I made. It went to SEMA, this car was in Hot Rod Magazine. You know, also a really special car. And it's not here because I sold that thing. Okay, that thing, my Cuda, long gone. We called it the Fishtail. Rad car, you know, really was stoked to build it. Very special to me in a way, for sure. But it was sort of done, and it was just time to move on from that thing. The number one reason I sold it is that somebody made me a pretty good offer on it. That's straight up number one. Boom. And number two, I felt like it was sort of done in a sense that to go any further with it, we'd have to sort of like re-envision the whole thing, and then we might as well start with the new one. You know what I mean? Like if I'm gonna take it away from either being like this drift slash street car, um, you know, into like either like a 70s vibe or a drag car or just more of like a street car, then you know, we had to redo the body, figure it all out, um, and just sort of take it to a place where I thought it had such good style and personality the way it was. I didn't really want to get in there and completely transfigure the whole thing into something else. So the Fishtail Cuda is gone. We're on and moving on. So with the Fishtail Cuda sold, that gives us just a ton of runway to keep stay tuned rocking and to focus on all of these other project cars I've got lined up. And let's just go through them now. You can hear about all the stuff we've got in the pipeline and there is a ton. And when I come here and I see these cars, my head starts spinning and I'm like, I wanna work on that one. I wanna work on this one. I wanna get this one. And then they were like, Which, what do we have parts for? Let's get this thing going. First up is my Cutlass. We call this the Red Hog, um, but we should probably call it the Crooked Cutlass because here's the thing with this car. I traded an S10 I got, out of, I got from HRG for this and the S10 was killer. It was in primer, lots of suspension, little, you know, 350 small block, fun, fun drive, run around truck. And I wanted a Cutlass and I traded it for this 1970 shell. Obviously the paint looks killer. Uh, the interior is very decent and it came pretty complete with uh, an old 350 under the hood and we just started working on it. Everything was in boxes, it was totally apart. Someone had, uh, the owner, the original owner, you know, had passed away and uh, his wife sold it to someone she worked with and I traded that guy for the S10. So there was no history, which was kind of a bummer. Um, we just could basically figure out, he put a 200 uh, 4R transmission in it, so we probably wanna make it like a cruiser. Um, there's maybe a little bit of cam in the 350, not much, it's got uh, headers on it, it had an Edelbrock intake on it. You know, basic, what'd you call like fun cruiser, you know, muscle car. We got this thing fired up. It sounded really nice. It's very basic, um, you know, old 350. Like I said, I had an, a Carter uh, AFB carburetor laying around that was brand new. What? This is a Holly Blue pump in here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How about that? I don't remember doing that. I think I do. It yeah, it was on the dyno. We'll do anything on the dyno to make a couple extra horsepower. So we got this thing fired up, made a screaming 169 wheel horsepower. Not great. It didn't matter. I didn't care. I've been on the hunt for something to bang around in that I don't, you know, super care about, isn't super racy. And I was like, this kind of fits the bill. Um, and here's where things kind of went off the rails with this car. We were busy. We were doing a million different things. We had done disc brakes in the front. We did a big radiator, like a lot of things you would do to like get your car into a decent driving car. Um, we got the front end on there. Zach did the front end. That's the, this is the first day he worked for us. And it's still on there. It is still on there. But if you take a step back, and the flat tires might accentuate this, I had a local shop, sometimes we have overflow stuff, put on some springs and shocks for me. And they came back and they were like, you know, it was sitting crooked. And I said, hey, let's put some springs and shocks on it. Send it off to the local shop. It came back. They're like, the frame is like, a, it's like bent big time. Big time. You can see it sits more crooked than it ever did. It may have some flat tires. I don't even think it's that. It's really terrible. It, the frame is unusable. It's rocked. It's bent. It's bent in the same place a lot of these frames bend, which I believe is at the lower control arm in the front. Uh, it's just what happens if you get these things into an accident. You can see big gaps here. This never looked right to me. This can be an indication of a bent frame, how big that gap is and how tight it gets at the bottom. When you can see back here, 
it's it's pretty decent. So that alone tells you if you step back, the car's got a little bit of this going on. Uh, doesn't really shut badly or anything wonky going on, but what's nice is it's a body on frame car, so I just set out to find myself a better. And it's the same, you know, it's shared with a Chevelle and uh, Buick GS, Skylark, uh, Pontiac, the GTOs, and the uh, Ventures. What's the one? What's well, the Pontiac? Sure. Le Mans. Le Mans, that's oh, the well, one. That's it. That's the one. Oh, Le Mans. So anyway, there's lots of different frames to choose from. If you just find yourself a 68 to 72 GMA body, and I did that, let's go look at it. So I started hunting around online for a frame and found one in Albany, New York. Zach went and picked it up. It's actually where the Cutlass is from, too. I wonder if they're ever in the same place or related. Um, this, if you recall from last month, is the frame we used to put the LS engines in for the shootout. We did a bare frame with a radiator on it, a transmission, and a fuel system to test the 5.3 versus the 6 liter versus the 5.3 I later used for the 911. And the plan is with this thing is to brace it up real nasty so it handles good. Um, tubular control arms on it and get it underneath that cutlass that's in there and make finally a, what will be a very good driving car. We've got uh, 355 gears and a limited slip for the back. I think there's a whole bracing kit you can do to make this thing really stiff, then we'll paint it again. It has been powder coated. A uh, gentleman whose YouTube channel is this, just said, hey man, I'm not using it, you should come grab it and just give me a little shout out. So, awesome dude, we're stoked, we're happy to have the frame and I can't wait to get it underneath that cutlass. Will we put an LS in it? Maybe. There's, that's a maybe. That's a solid maybe, because we got the mounts now, and we've got a transmission that works and a drive shaft. So, seems like possible. All right, let's move on. That's done. We're done with Cutlass. There's way other fun stuff to talk about. Like this boat. Yes. Let's talk about this boat. Is my sister watching this? Okay, yeah. You want to talk about this boat? There's way more fun stuff to talk about, like this boat. This is a Bayliner 175. Uh, early on in my channel when I was doing it, Part time, we actually had a blast tearing this thing apart. My sister owns this boat currently, although I feel like at this point I'm probably gonna have to buy it. Uh, it has a four cylinder, all iron, 150 horsepower engine that had ingested some water, cracked a bunch of stuff, everything went to like to absolute trash. And we sent it over to our buddy Larry. He honed it, he re ringed it, he put in new bearings, and it's sitting there ready to put together. The only thing is, I bought a, a cover for it. The first cover ripped. And now the second cover has ripped, uh, and I need a cover for it. But it, it's a decent little boat. We're going to get it together. It's been sitting here for too long. It's one of those, like, we're going to get to it at some point. That one's not next. The next boat we're going to talk about is this Lincoln. This is a 1998 Lincoln Mark 8. If you don't know, these come with 280 horsepower, four valve, 4.6 liter, nasty, essentially like early uh, Mustang Cobra motors. And they're killer. We took this one. Lift that hood up. Let them see it. Initially, it wasn't this. We just took a, you know, very affordable, basic CX Racing Turbo, uh, bolted it on here. We made this little turbo kit. It's just an up pipe um, welded to the factory manifolds and made a pretty decent amount of power with it. With just a ROM tune and some injectors and a fuel pump, it did, what did it do, 400 wheel? 410 maybe? Yeah, a lot. A lot of horsepower. We took it to the track, it immediately exploded, but man, that one day that it made power was super fun. And we, we went right back to the drawing board, like, okay, this car is awesome, let's just continue along that line. I do my absolute best to not spend a lot of money on cars. This car, 1200 bucks, right? Yeah. Is that what you paid for it, 15, 12? 1150. 1150. I, sent, I think he wanted $1,400 and I sent Barb and he came back and said I got it for $1,150. And it was a complete running and driving car that was halfway decent. It did like tie rods and a couple other things. But we love to get stuff, you know, super cheap here and show you the potential of cars instead of buying, you know, stroking a $15,000 check for a project and then of course making it, you know, red from there. This is an unloved car that came with a very cool engine uh, and we want to make it into like a really nasty sleeper. So in that, along those lines, I found on marketplace a fully built because we smoked the first engine 4.6 liter cobra motor right this thing has like arp hardware everywhere fully forged aftermarket everything stock no not even a stock crank right aftermarket oh, crank great. rods pistons it's got camshafts in it it's very serious and it hadn't run it was built i did find some uh 
documentation on the build. The rings were set up decent for nitrous, so they were going to work for turbo. Everything sounded really, really good. Uh, we put a Holley Terminator X Max on this thing. We have a bigger CX Racing Turbo that we put on it, and we took it to the dyno, and it just exploded. It's got a Gear Star transmission in it. It's serious. There's a lot of serious hardware on this car, and it was just like a complete letdown. It never made any oil pressure. You know, we're not super familiar with these mod motors. Barb is, but, you know, we didn't get anywhere with any of it. It just kind of fell apart. Um, Barb had a four-valve Mustang that was pretty nasty at one point. It was, you can see he's got his homemade Barb Leonardo Industries innovations. Coil covers on there. Um, they didn't help keep the motor together. I thought they might help us. Still exploded immediately. Did you rub them? We did. I did rub them, yeah. And the snake. That's I did right. rub the snake, yeah. Didn't help. One bit. So it blew up, but it has a ton of potential and a ton of great parts. And what's nice is we didn't let it like throw a rod through the side of the motor. It just didn't make that great a power. And we cut the oil filter off of it and it has a bunch of bearing material, material in it. So theoretically, we could go through this thing, tear it apart, give it a good once over, get it back together and have a 600-ish horsepower Lincoln Mark 8, which would be mostly hilarious. This is another car I had dreams of like mobbing around town in. Sleepers are super cool, wagons, you know, big sedans, something like a grandpa car like this Lincoln Mark 8 is way more fun to roll around with 400, 500 horsepower than it is to just drive around a, a you know, a loud ass Camaro. Loud ass Camaro is cool, obviously, but this is running under everybody's radar a little bit. There's something to be said about that. I like that most of these cars, I'm like, I really wanted something to drive around in the street every, and then they exploded. That's like the story of all these cars. I drive that. You look down the lane there. That's my daily driver. That's my kid mover. That's a 1999 uh, Lexus LX470. Very solid. Runs all the time. Not exciting, but you know, works. When I need it, it's there. But I'd like to get something a little bit more exciting to cruise around in. Here we've got Mikey's 1987 uh, Dodge Ram Charger. If you look, we actually put out a midweek episode of this thing this week. It was getting it up and running the story of Mikey buying it, turning it from like a rusted, frozen, stuck, you know, every wheel was stuck vehicle that was forgotten about for 20 years into a pretty decent driving little truck. We had a small part in that. He did most of it. But let's see if we can fire this hog up. Ashtray. I'm gonna put a Holly 750 on it. Got her all tuned in. Let's see what she does. Boom. Sitting here a week. Yeah, idling already. Just kidding. Just kidding. It's running. We'll take it. This thing is, is pretty good. It's got that 80s interior, big gauges. The same font as my mom's minivan from 91 that I remember. Same key. It's good. Interior is very decent. I like this thing, but keep back. Maybe we'll dig back into this at some point in the channel, but let's talk about other cars we're gonna rock with. Alright, this is our Tow Pig 04 Dodge Cummins 4x4. And our Ex resident trucker. And our resident yeah, trucker. Big trucker guy. Zach doing large car stuff. Uh, this thing has 230,000 on a 220 now, so it's just getting oh, broken in on the 5.9 coming. It's close to 40. Yeah, I don't know. It's got a lot. I bought it for a song. Um, it's been great. We did a bunch of suspension work to it, mostly dormant stuff underneath. I'd like to get rid of this ridiculous hood at some point. If any of you guys have, like, you know, a nasty uh, 440 or 360 truck and you want more of like a racy type hood, hit me up. I'll trade you. And it's white, I'll trade you. Yeah. So the hood is ridiculous, but I appreciate the fact that they tried to like really make it fancy. It's got the 5.9 Litre on it. You see that? Litre, it's uh, German for soda bottles. Okay, we're gonna talk about our other tow rig. This is Barb's D150, uh, a little bit different. Six in a row, ready to blow. <laughs> so we got under the hood here. This is powered by, this is a, what year is it, 80? 1980. Uh, D150, it's like the last year of the tin grill, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Which is super cool looking. Um, he wanted a, a bang around little truck, he'd been looking one for a long time. I found this one, we made it happen. 
Um, very solid. Uh, interior needs a little bit of work. It's a four-speed truck with overdrive. Yep. So it's, it's all iron case, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. He's just gonna make a nice little fun run around truck. He had a slant six truck that he was putting together over COVID and wound up selling it. It was like super rusty, replaced the roof and stuff. This one's much more solid, a little bit better starting point. And I think the idea is just a fun run around pickup. You're gonna put, he's got a five nine Magnum laying around. Mm -hmm. That'll make its way in here, keep it four speed maybe. And uh, you know, these are just great looking, cool little trucks, similar to the Ram Charger, same vibe, same chassis, uh, just, just wicked cool. Here's another complete impulse buy that kind of worked out and kind of didn't. This is a 1987 Mazda RX-8 that I had convinced myself was originally a turbo model. Turns out it wasn't. I saw the seats in this thing online for sale. And I was like, ooh, that's, those are turbo seats. This probably was all set up for turbo. At one point it had a small block Chevy with a 671 on it. Um, and I was like, we'll toss that, we'll get a rotary. And then I learned how much rotary stuff costs. Now, as a kid, I had five of these, some drift, some fun street cars. And I really love these things. They're awesome, super stiff chassis, lightweight, little red cars. Um, but if I, like I, we bought it, we got it back to the shop, I realized uh, the roof is fully gnarled up. Uh, it's got some sweet racing stripes and being dragged against the wall in here. And I just said, listen, let's just turn it into something rough and rowdy and throw a small block in it. So we got a literal junkyard uh, 350 short block that your dad had laying around swapped on some Summit uh, aluminum heads with 202 valves and I think 200 uh, cc intake ports and man it runs good. It runs real good. It has no carburetor on it right now um, because we stole that for the Polar. It was an 850. It was a little bit too big anyway and we reached out to Holly and got this pretty sweet uh, 750 double pumper that we're going to slap on and get this thing fired up. It hasn't fired up in a while but well, this thing usually you would breathe on the key and it would start up instantly. This is a fun, just like a little bracket car. These things are rear wheel drive, you know, from the factory. We went out and got a turbo two rear end. It can take a little bit more abuse. That's in there now with the factory limited slip. It has a turbo 350 that we put a shift kit. Well, Ben Brown put a shift kit in uh, at our shop and did a little bit of going over with everything. And it should be fun. We haven't ever taken it to the strip. We should. We kind of forgot about it. And I think one day, uh, just to get it down there, just to see like, you know, I would guess this is 350 horsepower, uh, just to see how quick that is in a nice light car. Cause I think it's pretty, it feels, it feels pretty fast. High 12. High 12, ah, I go quicker than that for sure. High 12. No, we'll see. We'll find out. We'll take it, we'll see what it does. Same scenario here. Try to fill these bowls up. Doing a good job there. Look at that. I'm proud of you. That's good there. I'm coming around that side. Get my good hand on the throttle. Hit it. Come on. A lot of, a lot of squirter here. Anyway, trust us. It runs pretty good. It does. Yeah, we're out again. We'll get them next time on this one, I think. <laughs> All right, next up, we have my 64 Polara 440, whatever you want to call it, Dodge. Um, this is a parts car that came with my other car. It's no title deal, but very solid, except for this part here where we cut out to, you know, hack into the other car. Um, this thing, I just got it as part of the deal. Um, you know, actually, if anybody wants it, I'm looking to get rid of it. You know, you know, it's. Come and get it, it's yours. First person to come grab it, you know, you wanna bring us a case of beer, that'd be fantastic. If not, just come get it. I'm gonna take probably the bumpers off of it and a couple other things, but it's ready to go, we could use the space. All right, next we have, I think the last car I bought, this is a 1955 Chevy 210 Coupe. A super iconic car, obviously two lane blacktop vibes, all this sort of like really special stuff, American graffiti. This car is iconic, it's super fun. Finnegan's got his blasphemy. Uh, and I got the opportunity to buy this thing. Very, very cool car. Very solid project. Great starting point uh, from one of our buddies, our buddy Matt Hogan. Just grabbed it, had to have it. Um, you know, it's, it's got a ton of good parts in it. It was definitely a street strip car at one point if you come around. Came with a bunch of parts. It's got the old racing steering wheel that everybody's got. 
It has four speed pedals here. It was originally a four speed car. Uh, it's got a little bit of a cage. We'll take it or leave it. I'm not sure yet, but it's got all the glass. It's got, you know, a bunch of the trim, enough of the trim, but the real, the real kicker is like the body is pretty much all there and we can be rocking and rolling with this thing and, you know, hopefully over the winter. I don't exactly know which way I'm going to go with as far as engine yet. Uh, we've talked high revving small block, supercharged big block, Vortec 4200 with a turbo hanging off the side, 2JZ, 12 valve Cummins. I don't really know yet. I know I want to shift it myself and I want it to lay uh, really cool black marks down the road when I stand on the gas. Maybe lift the front end off the ground. That's what I'm going for. Pretty standard wants. Pretty standard wants. <laughs> Just a cool car, man. I have loved the Tri-5 since I started getting like reintroduced to them through uh, Mike Finnegan. It's just a car when you sit inside it, it feels like the 50s. Like if you get in there, the amount of room, the way the windshield wraps around, the dash is like really ornate and intricate and beautiful. It just feels like a time machine. I, I you know, I grew up on cars from the 70s and 80s. They're nothing like this. This was a time when like, you know, it was like build a car that feels like the future. Build a car that feels like a spaceship. Build a car that looks, you know, like, you know, anything is possible. That's how I feel about these things. And inside, they're just so rad. And then you just took them, put them in primer, you know, put a giant nasty engine in it and drove them down the street. And that's even cooler. It's one of the best, because it's one of the cars that looks, one of the only cars that looks super rad if you just take the hood off and throw it away. It's not, it's pretty rare, pretty rare commodity. Okay, this is a car of a completely different breed. This is a 1989 or so Nissan 240 SX, 89 and 94, it doesn't really matter. Um, Little fastback. This is basically set up as like a pretty nasty drift car, pretty serious, not like pro competition, but you know, like a, a pretty good amateur would have something of this level. Um, it's a car I bought, you know, from a buddy for a thousand bucks back in the day because it already had the SR20 DET in it. Turned out that the chassis was super rusty and went out and bought this whole chassis. It came with the roll cage in it, the wide body, and then we just swapped everything into it. Uh, Jimmy Oaks came down, tuned the Link ECU, and I have a little uh, upgraded turbocharger here. It's like a 3076. This thing made by accident 400 wheel horsepower on the first rip we put it on, then we turned the boost down. It's basically a stock engine. This was a little engine that came in Japan only. It's a two liter dual overhead cam, uh, single turbocharger motor that factory, I think makes about 200 horsepower. And we've got it doing, we did do 320 wheel, about 320 wheel horsepower, so. 400 at the crank, just about doubled it. And these things will live pretty happily at that level. Um, at some point we're gonna dig into it. I wanna get it back on track. I was a pro drifter for about 10 years early on. Love driving cars on track. It's really fun. It's something I kinda have to do. Makes me feel like uh, me, sort of. Uh, and I, I like this car a lot. I just wanna continue getting it together. And I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. One of the things we're doing right now is figuring out what to work on for next week because uh, we're waiting on some parts for Power Kraut, my 911. Uh, we want to finish up the auto to manual six speed swap. That's a lot of little different Porsche of specific parts we need to get our hands on. Um, so we're waiting on that. And the Cyclone, same thing, waiting on some parts, trying to figure that thing out. So we're here trying to figure out what's, what's on the chopping block next. Can we get this thing up and running in a couple days and take it to the track? Maybe. Maybe this is what's next. You got that? I haven't fired it up in months and months. You got the battery charger on there? We had some wiring issues. We didn't exactly have it figured out. I'm going to see if I can get it started up. There, oh, I see all this idiot we did. I don't know, man. I don't like it. It did run. It did run for sure. Maybe this is the way we got to make this thing run. I don't like any of this. Definitely not our fault. I mean, it's definitely not their fault. No. It's somebody's fault. Who could we blame it on? Not us. Jimmy. Yeah. Messed up, man, what you came Sorry in. Sorry about it. Just kidding. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We were thr thrashing through to get this car rocking on the channel last time. Uh, this is actually Haggerty, I believe. Um, but we could get in here and work on this thing this week. At least turn it into a driving car, that's for sure. It's got a drive shaft in it. We could do some Just stuff. Never had like, brakes. Never had brakes, that's true. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm in. Is this the one? You guys are killing me. This one will be a lot of fun. This one's like the most likely to work right away. You hating on my Lincoln? Yes. 
Always. Lincoln is pretty cool too. It is. This, this is like hard parts. 240, the Lincoln. I'd like to drive this one. Yeah. I'd, learn, I'd like to learn how to I've never driven this. this one. I know. This was another car we talked about this week. This is my 1978 Lotus Esprit. Again, completely off the reservation with this one. Just out of left field. Uh, wild car. You know, a car I always wanted. These are super cool. This is like quintessential 70s supercar. Engine in the back, you know, in the middle. Uh, it's a little naturally aspirated four-cylinder with two carburetors on it. Uh, it's a Lotus, so it was essentially built in a barn by a bunch of British guys. But man, it's beautiful. They know what they're doing. Everything is super light. This car weighs like 2,000 pounds. And it does run. It needs clutch hydraulics. We'd have to figure out the brakes. They're all frozen. I have most of the parts. And uh, this is a very rad car. This is... You know, if you want to feel tall, get yourself a Lotus Esprit because it is tiny in there. And it's pretty, I, I don't know, man. Every time I look at a car, every time I touch one of these cars, I'm like, this is what we should work on next. This is it. Look, it's a Lotus Esprit. How fun would this be around town? It's got louvers on it. It's got two fuel tanks for no reason, which I think is the best. It's got a flat windshield. They're like, how do you want to make the windshield? Just get a piece of glass from the refrigerator store. Got an extra shelf and we'll just shove it in there. That's what they did. But look at it. Okay, don't look at the Honda wheels. The big problem with this car and what has held us up is that it came with a set of super killer three-piece BBS magnesium wheels in staggered 15 and 16 inch sizes that are impossible to get your hands on in the 4x100 uh, bolt pattern for this thing. And I have them. I sent him over to my wheel guy to have them straightened and repaired. And he came back and he said, look, these are magnesium centers. They're all cracked. You can't use them. These things are shot. So with that being said, I bought just some Honda wheels to roll it around on. If you look at the back, it is a absolute sunken battleship back there. Uh, and it's not really, I don't even think it could roll like that as far in. It has inboard brakes, um, but there's not, it's like a hovercraft in the back there. So once we get wheels figured out, this will be a viable car to get, get back over to the other shop, start working on it, and hopefully get it down the road, because I think it's just, look at it. It's wild. This is a car when I was a kid, like, you'd see any of these cars, you know, old Ferraris or Lotus, anything that's like, you know, rear engine, and they just have the coolest look to them. It's wild. It's a good one. Okay, and this is a car, it's a little bit of a surprise. This is not my car. This is Derek Bieri's car from Vice Grip Garage. It's a car that I found and I was like, dude, this feels like you. I think you should grab it. And he was like, I'm in, I'll grab it. I'll come up, we'll build it, we'll take it home. It'll be the best. So it just was like, to me, we had talked about kind of cars he likes and this popped up for sale. It's a 67 Fairlane 500. It's incredibly rad. It was an old street strip car, but it hasn't done anything since the eighties. You can see it has the little driver hoop only roll cage in it. It has this old bus seat that's like a, got these four point belts in it. It's got the sparkle steering wheel. It's set up for four speed, old school switches, just hand lettered on there. It's, it's got gauges up on the dash. It's got a big old shift light from who knows what. Uh, it's wicked cool. This thing is just such a cool car. It has an S and W race cars keychain from probably 1980. Earlier than that. Maybe even 70s. earlier. Yeah, 70s. It's just like a total time capsule of a 70s drag car, and I love it. And we got it for a great price. It's got long wheel studs. It's got a 9-inch in the back of it. You want to open it up? I don't think the hood's bolted now. Oh, it could be. Okay. Yes, that checks out. Uh, nothing really under the hood. I remember like a Mallory Ignition. Uh, it's got a little bump box on it. Two regulators. Two, re yeah, two old school fuel regulators. This thing probably made some jam back in the day. You oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, I'm serious. Two regulators, maybe just two two big old carburetors on there. Uh, it's got that old Mallory ignition. It's, it's a cool setup. Somebody hacked up uh, the cross member there to fit an oil pan or something along those lines, maybe a different motor. It's got a super old Pabst proper beer can from the oh, 70s you yeah. see that as a catch can that's gotta stay that thing oh, is yeah. sick so yeah derek hit derek up and be like when are you going to build that fairly at tony's because we're supposed to get it done soon it's such a cool i can't tell you i mean are you looking at this look at this 
it's just it's like another it's almost like the firebird it's like just a complete time capsule and these cars look there's lots of cars that got raced in the 80s but they got updated in the 90s and then 2000s and then just like you know they don't all look like this anymore so this is a, a wicked special car it's mostly solid for pennsylvania a little bit of like I don't even know if it's rust repair or they just made more room for bigger tires, like a little tub in there. Um, it's not super clean, but man, it's a 10 footer and it looks nasty. It's got the old stickers. It's got, you know, just tons of character and it looks cool. Derek's nine feet tall. It's a big car. It's going to fit him well. Uh, so yeah, hopefully we'll get to this thing pretty soon. All right. Last but not least, Zach, come grab this corner, pull this off. This is my last pro drift car i competed in the formula drift series like the american pro series up until 2014 started doing hrg in 2015 and this is my 800 wheel horsepower scion frs uh, this car is about as serious as it gets um, very nasty that's a toyota 2az stroke from a 2.4 to 2.55 Running on Motec uh, E98 with a 125 shot of nitrous on top. It's got a Garrett uh, GT35 on it, a 3582. Uh, running close to 30 pounds of boost. This thing made almost as much torque as horsepower. Uh, it's very nasty. It came in around 2,550 pounds. Um, it's 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 about the fastest thing I've ever driven. And I've driven a lot of cars at this point, but the lightness and the violent power of that four cylinder is unbelievable. It's got a G-Force GSR, you know, complete NASCAR road race transmission. It's got a winner's quick change rear end, SPL arms in the back, custom stuff in the front. This car is bananas. When I tell you this car is why, you know, I've driven again, some pretty fast cars, but I think this might be the fastest or at least the scariest. And it all, you know, once it's gripped up and pulling, it's like a freight train. It does not feel like a four cylinder anywhere. Cause you use, first off, it's 2.6 liters. So it's not tiny, high compression. It's like 11 and a half to one. Um, and you use the nitrous down low to spool that big turbo. And it just has a nasty power, man. Power everywhere. It's, it's wild. You want to do this one this week? I don't even know. There's not really, like, to, to do this thing, the motor is a little bit tight. I think we need to go through it and put new bearings in it. Uh, we need new valve springs because it's been sitting for a million years. Um, so essentially like a quick uh, engine refresh and probably all new fuel lines because it runs on the E85 or E98, mostly ethanol. Um, and that was probably eating up the lines by now. We replaced them a couple years ago to get it fired up. But it's, you know, like I said, you know, it's got stop tech, dual caliper, handbrake here. One's the handbrake, one's the, the foot brake. You know, this is, this is a race car. This is a, this is a real race car. There's, and we cut out as much weight as we could um, and then stuck it back in in places where we needed it just to make weight. Um, this thing is wild. And at this point, you know, it would be a lot to drive it. The pro cars, even, you know, it, I'm sure they're even nastier now, but this is not a car you can hop in and just tool around in on track everything happens really quickly i can only do this and keep mental focus for like an hour and a half after that i'm like i'm out i can't like in testing we would test a few times and at some point i would be like i can no longer concentrate hard enough to keep up with this car to get any decent data on how to make it better it's wild everything about it is absolutely bananas There's a lot of fuel pumps in there We did some stuff. We did some stuff with this thing. What else? Yeah, this thing is wild. It sounds good too. <clears throat> Drive by wire. You can do a little bit of extra finicky things with that. It's got a BC stroker kit in it. Um, Steph Papadakis, I inherited this whole program, this motor and stuff. And the RSR team at one point, um, and then Papadakis helped me decide to change the cams and to run the motor a little bit differently, uh, change the turbo, do a bunch of different things. But it's all been fully hand-built. 
uh, and it's it's pretty wild. Yeah, it'd be fun to drive this one. We we talked about maybe take it on like PA has a pretty intense hill climb scene. Take it up to a couple of these different mountains out here would be really fun to do with it. Uh, I don't really know. It's just such a wild car. We should do something with it. Just maybe not this week. All right, we got a couple motors lying around. This is another aluminum 5.3. This is the super clean, crispy one. You can see it looks brand new that we got from uh, B&R Auto Wrecking. This is a spare 6.4 Hemi. Let me get this America blanket off this thing. As you can see, cover it in the stars and stripes. This is a basically zero mile 6.4. Hemi, I had problems with this thing when I first put it in my Cuda, uh, and Larry went through it, put a new piston and a rod in it, and it's ready to rock. So that'll go somewhere too at some point. What else? Oh, I've got an Aston Martin V12 over here somewhere. We're back at the main shop with three other projects, but these things you should know already. This is our Cyclone. It's a DIY down and dirty version of the GMC Cyclone. This thing is the best. I've got my power kraut. This is a dirt cheap 911 that we've got LS powered and should be hitting the street soon. And this is my 1964, just bang around, super affordable muscle car. It's a Dodge Polara with a big block Mopar in it, and it's wicked awesome. That is it for this episode of Stay Tuned. Uh, thank you guys so much for following along. The Cuda is gone, but that's okay. I'm feeling zero remorse, just stoked to keep on chugging. Working with my buddies, building this channel, everything has been incredible. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.